Jesus, there is no eternal life. This is not the way. Your soul is at stake. Their blood is going to be in your hands. And that's, be, that, that's before the Lord. Okay? I want to bring you the greatest news to humanity. And that is the message of the gospel. I want to tell you that the message of the gospel offers peace, offers freedom, offers deliverance. I want to tell you that Jesus is alive. Jesus did not just die, but He resurrected and He defeated death, which is humanity's greatest enemy. I want to tell you tonight that anyone who believes in Jesus, anyone who believes in the gospel, you qualify to be saved this very night. I want to tell you all that without Jesus, there is no salvation. There is a hell and there is a heaven and these two places are real places. And I come here to warn you because I love you. And I want to ask you this question that if any of your family members were sleeping in a house and you were outside of the house and you knew that the house was on fire, will you not scream from the top of your lungs to try to warn your loved one, your neighbor and say, there is a fire and I need to warn you, wake up and come out. And I want to tell you that that is the same thing that I'm doing this very night. I'm warning you from a place that is called hell. I want to tell you that no matter what you have done, if you can believe in Jesus, you can be saved from that place this very night. Look, I want to tell you that God is not the one that sends us to hell. We send ourselves to hell for rejecting God, for rejecting the message of the gospel. The only good news of salvation. I'm sorry. God did create everything. He loves the people. He just doesn't make the decisions that people make. Hey, I, I, hey, I don't mind having You're a conversation. You're now officially on my property. I'm going to ask you to step aside and not patronize my patrons, right? Right? You can't do that. You're on Swellen's property. Why, why are you allowing the enemy to use you? You're on the property, and I really thank you. Can you get them off the property, please? Tonight, I want to warn everybody that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And I'm telling you this because Jesus loves you and I truly love you. I experienced Jesus at the age of 17. I had a supernatural encounter that changed my life. And Jesus can change your life this very night. There are so many people that are suffering. You're empty, there is a void. And I want to tell you that Jesus paid a high price for you to be saved. What law is this, sir? You harass the people. Why are you shining? Why are you shining the light in my face? These are rights, officer. They're right too. They have rights too. Can we have your name and your badge number, please? You told me that this is public property. I have the right, freedom of speech. Okay. A lot of things that are being done here is disturbing my peace too. Okay, you don't have to be here. Okay, okay, they don't have to be here either. Yeah, they do. This is for them. This is for so they can be here, but I can't be here. You don't have to be here. If you, if this is the problem. They here, don't either, officer. I'm not trying to go back and forth with you, but you're violating our rights. You are, officer. Let's be at peace. He calls a supervisor, and we'll see where we go from there. It's no problem. We're, we're not the people to go back and forth. With so how am I harassing them? Because you're stirring, you're sitting there trying to do what you're doing, and the fact that you're harassing them and you're making a very huge point about it, and I want to leave because this is their area, their community. That but this is public. Them. This is my area too, as a citizen. Well, they have all right to be here because. Do I have? So I don't have the right to be I here. Not say that. Don't twist my words. Okay, I'm just asking because I'm a little bit confused. I have rights. I'm in a public, I'm in a public you space. Not, you, know, you, reckon, you not that a lot of the areas around here are all LGBTQ. What, 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 is that, what does that have to do with anything? You mentioned it. I didn't. I'm just preaching the gospel. You have right to be here, but they don't. I'm sorry? You said you have right to be here, but they don't. What do you mean? Wrong. We all have the right to be here. No, I'm not trying to make this a big deal or anything. I'm standing on public sidewalk. I have the freedom of speech. Um, my message, obviously, not everybody's for it. Some people are. I've, a lot of people have came up to me, 
ask for help, ask for prayer, etc. Yeah. So I'm a preacher of the gospel, okay? There's a lot of things that are being played, music, things that are being said, things that are being done that perhaps does bother me and I don't like it, but that doesn't make it unright. So, okay, so my question here, and, and this is being recorded, um, thousands of people are watching, I just want honesty. I don't want my freedom, to, I, don't, I don't want my rights to be violated. I'm standing on public property and I'm preaching the gospel. I don't have no mic that the volume is way too high or anything like that. I'm just preaching, simply preaching the gospel. Am I allowed to do that? You are, it's freedom of speech, you are on public property. You're preaching something to a bunch of people who may or may not agree with, you know, your views. It could be with I'm preaching, a music, I'm a Christian et myself, okay? I get it, all right? I'm God-fearing, all of it, all right? People want to be respected. People come out here to this place to feel comfortable because a lot of these people grew up with Christianity being thrown down their throat and thrown on their face all the, all their time, right? Different really. situations for everybody. All, yeah, right, right. So, but they don't want to have to deal with the same thing. They come out here to be comfortable. They come out here to be themselves. They come out here to feel free of who they choose to be, right? Because everything's a choice in life, right? So at that point, it becomes a problem for the public out here when you guys are doing all this stuff. So I'm going to ask you not to be on property, because I can. It is part private property, um, right? Um, I'm going to ask that you don't interact with the patrons unless, unless they, they want to. to. Correct. Again, freedom of speech. I'm not going to infringe on that. Okay, my job's not to do that. My job is to make sure everyone's safe out here and yes, feels sir. comfortable. Yeah, like, like like you said, people have come say, oh, you're going to hell, you're in your sin, et cetera, like that. People have done that. That's not my my approach. I'm preaching simple gospel of salvation. I, I get you. Know? you. Okay. Yeah, I grew that, up in church, okay? You know. I, 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 I'm all about it. You know, I, I believe certain people need to find Christ, and I believe certain people need to, you know, whatever. Yes, I'm yes. not going to get into it. You guys are recording, so I have to stay within certain like, yes, boundaries here because they feel uncomfortable they're not going to come out here and if they don't come out here the business is going to lose money right now whether you care about that or don't care about that a business is a business i'm a business owner i'm not, i would hate for someone to come out and mess with my company and have, you know make me lose money i mean right? even, even if even if souls are on the line i mean what people choose to do on, with their life is what they choose to do with their 100%. life 100 but that's that's the way i look at i look at i value souls more than business, more than people's money, more than people's desires, etc. You. you know, so, I mean, that aside, I'm just simply here, preach the gospel as much as I can, however many places possible, and just move forward. People are being touched, there's results happening, and, and that's, just, that's just my burning desire, for people to be, to be saved, to hear the gospel, peace, people are suffering, you know, and, and I feel like this is not being done enough. And, and I feel like God has truly called me for this, and I'm not stopping. I, I get that. Yes, sir. The Bible clearly states that anyone who believes in the Son has life, but anyone who does not be believe in the Son of God has no life. The shouting is the part I'm talking about. I don't, we don't need the shouting part. So that becomes disturbing these people, right? When you start disturbing the peace, and they feel that their peace has been broken, that's when I'm going to have to contact Dallas PD and they're going to come out and deal with you. Okay. okay. So I don't want to have to deal with that. So if I do proclaim the gospel and I continue to preach, what's going to happen? If you're shouting, I, I would have to call Dallas PD. I don't want to have to do that. There's no need. That would be that would be wasting Dallas am PD's I, time. Dallas I, got way too many things going on. Am I exceeding the level of sound by using my own voice? I, I, know there has, I know there has to be a certain level of sound. Correct. I've, I've, it's happened before where I've used speakers and they say, hey, it's too loud. Too you either loud. Turn it off, just scream, but right. you can't be using the speaker. I'm so, trying to have a general understand, understanding with you. If I proclaim the gospel, I, I understand you're trying to have mutual respect, etc. I go my own way, you go your own way because you don't have to do too much work being called back again. But the thing is this, I'm called to preach the gospel, okay? And I'm called to now, deal if, with the situation. Okay, if you call, if you call whoever you need to call because I am preaching the gospel to people, okay? No, what line am I breaking, breaking that can get me in trouble? These patrons are now feeling offended. These patrons are now feeling disturbed. It's, it's the fact that I'm trying to make sure that the guest out here and the business isn't being disturbed. You're, try, you're trying to make them comfortable in their sin. I want, 
I want them to be comfortable wherever they are. You, you see, but the, th but the thing is this. I'm not here to judge what they choose to do with their lives. I understand, but the Bible does call us to save I souls. And that, no that soul can be saved unless we open their that, eyes. Right. That doesn't mean they have to follow that, the, the word of the gospel. They don't have to do that. I understand what you're trying they to do. They don't, but some people will. Maybe they will. But I'm asking, like I said, if people are walking by and you say, hey, ma'am, sir, can I talk to you about the Lord? You know, something like that. You're communicating with something. People are going to get a better response from you I, if you're coming out. And, sure and I do do that. I do do that sometimes, so, not all the time. Okay. okay well, let's, let's, the, let's the only thing is, I just don't want my, time. I just don't want my rights to be violated. I'm not okay. Not violating any of your rights. Now, I'm just asking that you. I, I'm asking. I'm not telling you, forcing you. It's me genuinely just asking if you could not disturb the bars. Okay. So if I do continue to preach, what would happen to me? I mean, I'm, I, what could only, happen? The only thing I can do is call a Dallas PDO. Okay, and what, what do you think they will do? They may tell you to move along. They may tell you not to. But what I'm saying, what a possibility is, if Dallas PD comes out here, and I'm able to sit here and articulate to them that I have spoke to you multiple times, and now the patrons are becoming a favorite. Like, that bar, was, that patty was full. And now they all went inside because they don't want to hear it. No, that was not the cause, sir. When I was preaching, sure. they were all here. Yeah. After you, after you approach, they all started just ha having their way inside. Because they're just watching you guys. Yeah, it's a but, show to them. but it's a show to a lot of people. A lot of things that Jesus was doing was a show to them too. But look, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move, okay? Appreciate it. But all these souls, maybe there was somebody in need, who's who's dealing with suicidal thoughts, who's dealing with pain in the heart. If there was a soul that I missed because of this reason and they had the chance to hear the gospel but ended up not being able to hear the gospel because of this situation, their blood is going to be in your hands. And that's, be that, that's before the Lord. Okay? So, so I'm going to move. God bless you. It's not right. It's not right. They want to have their own way, do whatever. We have, we have rights. And that, that's the thing. Souls are perishing every day, but that's not going to stop us. we got to continue to preach. Jesus is coming soon. Everybody's going to be judged. Everybody. Jesus is the only way, my friends. I want to tell you that the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to tell you this very night that you qualify to have eternal life, if only you can believe in Jesus. I want to tell you that you are so valuable, and you are worth the blood of Jesus. I want to tell you that Jesus suffered the punishment that you and I deserve. But he suffered and he took his place. He suffered and he took your place as a sinner so that you could take his place as a righteous man. It is only through the shedding of innocent blood. It is only by that blood that we are able to be made perfect. My friends, your own conscience bears witness that there is a God and this God demands something from you. God wants your yes. God wants you to open up your heart and allow Him to change your life. Jesus can give you peace like this world can never give you. Jesus can heal your wounds. Jesus can heal you spiritually. Tonight, I want to tell everyone, if you are here and inside you are suffering, remember Jesus. There is one who loves you and whose love never fails. There was one who defeated death so that through him you can have life this very night. My friends, it is sin that separates us from God. The Bible says that anyone who does not believe in Jesus is condemned already. But I want to tell you that there is a way out to be saved, to be healed, and to have a transformed life. And that is only through Jesus. Jesus took your place in the cross. We hung Jesus. We are the ones that beat Jesus. We crucified Jesus. But there is one thing that Jesus said while we were punishing him. 
And he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Tonight, my friends, I want to tell you that you have no idea what is taking place in your life. There is a war for your soul. Satan is fighting for your soul. And God is fighting for your soul. Jesus wants your soul. Who will you choose this very day? The Bible says, choose this day. Choose this day whom you will serve. Jesus or the world. Jesus or Satan. My friends, the only way out, the only way of escape from hell is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that you were made in the image and the likeness of God. And I want to tell you this very night that Satan, he has corrupted, he has confused, he has manipulated and he has lied. But I want to tell you the reality and it's this, that Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. God is not responsible for your suffering. We are by opening the door to the enemy. The Bible says that Jesus spoke and he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can get to the Father except by Him. If you don't believe that Jesus is God, you cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. All the weekends, you get drunk, you smoke, you have sex outside of marriage. But whenever you wake up, how do you feel? There's nothing changes in your heart. But I want to tell you that if you can give Jesus a chance, you will never regret it. The Bible says that He will give you peace. A peace that does not come from this world, but a peace that comes from above. Your mother, your father cannot satisfy that void. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend cannot satisfy that void. It is only Jesus. It is only Jesus. Receive Jesus this night. Believe and open up your heart. And you will see that your life will never remain the same. Receive Jesus this night. Time is running out. And the clock is ticking. Receive Jesus this night. Jesus is the only way. Repent and believe in the gospel. I think they were calling the, they were calling security too, right? That's crazy. It's a disturbing peace. What is this type, type of music? It's not only disturbing my peace, it's disturbing my spirit. <laughs> it's disturbing the spirit of God. And you're talking about disturbing people's peace. God have mercy. Tonight, I have one question for everybody that is standing in this line. And the question to you is this. If tonight were to be your last night and you were to stand before God and God were to ask you, what did you do with the life that I gave you? How would you answer Him? I want to tell you that without Jesus, there is no salvation. We worry so much about the outside, but when will we worry about our soul? Sorry? You're not supposed to judge others. Okay, how, how am I judging if you don't mind me asking? Okay, what, what, what did I say that was judging? Yelling out Bible verses. Asking us, why are we the way we are? So God made us like this. I didn't, I didn't ask y'all that. You have to come out here every The Bible says that anyone that does not believe in the Son, they have not life. But anyone who does believe in the Son of God has life. This very night, I want to tell you that your hope is Jesus. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And I'm preaching this because your soul is at stake. Heaven and hell is real. Whom will you choose to serve this very day? Your own conscience bears witness of this message that there is a God who is holy. And without the blood of Jesus, without the blood of Jesus sanctifying us from our sin, 
We cannot see God. That's why it is only through Jesus that we can enter heaven and have eternal life. Receive Jesus and believe in Him. And I want to tell you that it will be the best decision that you ever make. Why are you out here asking and judging us why we are the way we are but God made us like this? God wrote the book, right? He, okay. he knew our life before we even knew our 100%, own life, right? 100%. So He knew we was going to be gay. And I said, He made us this way. Okay, Can I ask you something? I just want to get... Why y'all out here? What is the what is the message? Is he trying to get people to change their lives? Are is, we the, is, the me, is the message of the gospel? Okay, y'all want people to not be out here I'm and sorry? be proud. So no, not with us. With Jesus. With Jesus, not with us. Okay. Hey, you know half of these people not. Oh, well, because that's not gay. And, and we just got here for fun. I, I didn't say nothing about gay people. You didn't have to, but why are you out here yelling down? Here I go right everywhere. I'm preaching the gospel to lost souls. You preach the gospel to lost souls. Yeah. Here, why you ain't in deep end? I just oh, went last you week. Should. You went last week. We so you need to be out there right now. Look, you need to be open to God. I have a video. Do you have a, do you have a church? I go to a church, yeah. Okay, well you, you should promote a church and think about starting a church instead of being out here on the street. The Bible ain't gonna help you. We are now judging you like we feel like you're judging us. The Bible says to be light in dark places. This is not so you feel like this is a dark place, right? Huh? Why do you feel like this is a dark place? Because there's a lot of ungodliness taking place here. We are out here to have fun and be young as God wants us to be. God wants us to live in the present moment. Yeah, but this, this, this doesn't please God. Yes, this is not that please God. I want God to be happy. God does not want us to be in the house. I know we love your name and we can do it life, but, but this is what it's going to be to do. God, and again, God wrote the book before we knew even was born. So he put us right here. We yeah. where we need to be. But he placed right us here now. to imitate Jesus. Because no. no. you made you will. We wouldn't even be here. We was in a bad place. We're not in a bad place. We're all doing good in life. We're all happy. We're all successful. And God put us in the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. The Bible says if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If I love you, you keep my commandments. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. I ain't read that one. I ain't into my Bible like that. I should be though. You are right. There's a lot of people right. that love Jesus with their lips, but not with their heart. No. I love him with my heart. But you're like Okay. About what you got going on. Okay, do you believe that Jesus preached the gospel? Do he what? Do you think that Jesus preached the gospel? Preach the gospel? Yeah. People preach. No, Jesus. Did he preach the gospel? People preach the gospel because they get it out the book. No, because the Bible tells us. The, the Bible tells us to follow Jesus. If you, but have you not known how many times the Bible has been touched? Okay. And everybody has gotten their hands on the Bible. Have you not thought about that? Well, yeah, but we have evidence that it's still One really reliable. One thing about it, no. One thing about it, Jews are supposed to say I'm going to preach the gospel because this conversation is not going to go anywhere. Without Jesus, there is no eternal life. This is not the way. Your soul is at stake. Jesus is the only way. Without Jesus, there is no life. I do pray. Jesus will have a supernatural encounter with you. And I want to tell you that I'm not offended, but I am sad because I know what Jesus feels. Hey, why are you out here with that? I'm preaching Jesus, bro. Why are you preaching Jesus? Because he's he a Christian. You're a Christian? I'm a Christian. I, you you want to know what I got to say? What you got to say? The Bible says to follow Jesus and to not be conformed with this world. I'm following Jesus. Okay, okay what, what what are you doing that's following Jesus right now? I'm not being judgmental I mean, to, to people. I mean, you coming up to me is kind of judgmental and well, telling me what you're, you're telling me. Here preaching, you're out here trying to condemn people. That's okay, what you're Okay, what am I saying? You're not preaching Jesus because Jesus is love. What did I say that's condemning people? You're condemning people out here. What did I, I say? I already know what's up with you. No, the, and don't put me on your little YouTube button. You can start recording now. Hey, but, you, but, you, but you're claiming... Hey, go ahead and delete
that. Hey, you're the one that stopped, bro. Go ahead and delete that. You're the one that stopped, bro. Go ahead and delete that. You're the one that stopped. Go ahead and delete that. Listen, if you don't want to go ahead and delete it, you can. Okay, well, I'm having a conversation with you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I do pray that this video blessed you, encouraged you, and edified you. Now, if the Lord does place in your heart to donate anything, in the description below will be the cash app of the ministry where I attend. You can give to there. Be a great blessing. And may God remember you. Now forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you all.